hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new on my channel my name is stella i'm an education lifestyle and mom youtuber based in the united states i am a phd student in the united states and on this channel i discuss i bring educational content such as scholarship opportunities and um to study outside of nigeria outside of your country basically to study abroad and i do this based on my experience having secured uh, fully funded scholarships to do a master's degree in India and currently fully funded scholarship doing a PhD in the United States. So I created this channel just as a way of expressing myself and talking about things that I know to help others. And as a mom as well, I live here with my kids, I live here with my family, so I like to bring a little bit of my experience coming over here with kids and how it's going just as a way of helping others who may want to take this decision and are not so sure how to go about it and a couple of times i bring one or two things about my boring or exciting lifestyle <laughs> so in today's video welcome to my channel if you haven't subscribed please click the subscribe button it is a red button which is down there below and if you want to get notified whenever a new video pops up on my channel you can click the bell which is right next to the subscribe button and so whenever i upload a new video you get notified so these are totally free so help me okay <laughs> so let's get right into the, into today's video today's video it's a continuation having talking about getting a perspective getting a supervisor and all of that stuff so today i'm talking about if eventually you get a good response, a positive response from a prospective supervisor requesting to have an interview with you, what should you expect? So this is basically based on my own experience, having gotten positive feedbacks and had interviews with professors. So I'll be sharing based on what I know. There are lots of other information out there, but this is basically based on my personal experience. <laughs> so I have a couple of points here. The first thing you need to do is you need to be aware that you're going to be preparing a slide. If you're not sure, then it's, you can shoot the professor an email asking if you, he or she requires you to prepare a slide. But most likely, you will need a slide because for all the interviews I've had, I, I, I had to prepare slides. In fact, they even want you to prepare slides because it helps them to like carry along with what you're discussing. So your slides shouldn't be too bulky. It's just like a couple of slides presentation, maybe like three, four, five, six. Yeah, something like that. So what should you have in this slide? Even six is too much, what are you doing? So let's just say three, four, okay, three, four, five, six. So, but don't make it too wordy. Don't make it too boring. Make it really interesting and catchy, you know, yeah. So what are these things you need to talk about in this slide or you need to discuss with the professor? The first thing is you want to introduce yourself to this professor because they barely know you. You may have sent your CV and your your result, your transcripts to them, but who knows? Maybe they went through it, maybe they didn't. And even if they did, they want to hear from you, right? So the first thing you want to do is to introduce yourself. By introducing yourself, I'm not saying you should start saying your state of origin and all of that unnecessary stuff and your age. Introducing yourself here, I'm talking about you talking about who you are, your academic background. Remember, you're applying for grad school, master's, PhD, whatever. So you talk about, not whatever, master's, PhD, it's not whatever. <laughs> Forgive me. So you're talking about your academic background. What, what are you up to? What have you been doing? You, do, you have a bachelor's degree? What's your CGPA? What kind of project did you do in your bachelor's degree? You have your master's degree, what's your CGPA? What kind of project did you do in your master's degree? What kind of courses did you take and stuff like that? You're not saying all these things for one hour. You're just like giving a brief introduction about your academic background. Then another thing you might want to talk about during the introduction is probably your work experience. If you're working, like in my case, I'm, in a, I'm a lecturer in Nigeria, so I had to bring that, I always bring that um, to my interview that this is what I am up to and this is what I do. I teach undergraduate students chemistry and this is the experience I've been able to gather as an undergraduate teacher or undergraduate lecturer. So yeah, these are the ways you can actually introduce yourself. Then the next thing you want to now, you want to now do is talk about your past research experience. Remember, graduate school abroad, like in the United States, is deals with a lot of research. So they want to know what kind of research have you done in the past and 
are you do you have any form of research experience they may not be looking for a pro because you're applying for grad school you're applying for masters or phd so they know that you're not a pro but then you should have some reasonable level of research experience if you're a nigerian definitely you have some research experience because you must have done a project in your bachelor's degree they want to hear that if you've also done a master's then you can talk about the projects you did in your bachelor's and your master's and any other kind of projects you may have done after your master's when i'm talking about project i'm talking about research projects that are in line with what you're applying for and one of the tricks that i usually use is to before when a professor invites me for interview before i even start preparing my slide i go through the professor's website to see the kind of research they are into of course before i even reached out to the professor i must have gone through their website to be sure that what they are doing is something that interests me right so but of course when you're not invited for an interview you want to now do some in-depth study to understand how to now link what you have been doing or what you have done in the past with what they are doing that's how you catch their interest so you try to connect it may not be exact kind of things but you just try to create that connection between what you have done in the past and what they may be doing in their own research group then the next thing you want to talk about is your current research experience your current research that you the current <laughs> the next thing you want to talk about is your current research what you are currently doing now uh when preparing this slide if you're talking about your past research experience you don't want to start writing so many things writing the whole abstract nope you're just picking up picking out what is most important in the research you have done the theme of your research and then while talking you can now do a lot of more explanation of course you did the research so you should be able to explain better so you don't have to write everything on the slide because it's going to be really really boring so current research what you're currently doing if in my own case, I had a current research ongoing because I am a lecturer in Nigeria. Most of the times, if you're a lecturer in Nigeria or a research assistant in Nigeria, there is the, that tendency for you to have a research that is ongoing. But if probably you are a secondary school teacher, you may not necessarily have that. So it's fine, but you should find a way to kind of explain that this is what you are currently up to and this is what you hope to be doing in the future like don't make it look like you're just redundant you know you don't want to sound that way so you talk about what you're currently up to in terms of research then the next thing and once again try to make it like um, find some common grounds between what you're currently doing and what the professor is doing in their own research group then of course talk about your future research plans what do you want to do in the future sometimes it may end up not being that way what i'm doing currently in my phd was never what i ever talked about in any interview but then it just happens things change projects come and things just happen and you're doing something else that is sometimes totally different from what your future research plans are and sometimes they actually align if you sit down to critically analyze what you're doing you realize that okay it still aligns with what you did in the past just like sometimes i feel there's a disconnect but then i realized recently that what i'm doing right now actually um, matches what i have done in the past but just looking at it from a different dimension and solving a different kind of problem or solving the same kind of problem but in a different kind of sector kind of yeah so your future research plans so for this for the sake of this interview make sure your future research plans actually aligns with what is going on in that group to, to some extent because if your future research plan is something totally different the professor might feel like mm, okay um what, what this is what i'm doing and it doesn't seem to sound like what you might be interested in because what you're seeing is totally different from what i'm doing so that might want to push the professor backwards like i'm not sure this is the right person but of course some professors don't really 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 mind because what they are looking out for is just someone that has that zeal that capacity to actually do research they are not looking for somebody who already knows they may not necessarily be looking at okay I, this is the project you want to do and if it's, since it's not my kind of project i can't take you but then they are looking for somebody that has that research capacity the capability so they can actually work with you to do that kind of thing you're doing even if not, that kind of thing you want to do even if not exactly but they try to find a way to work with you so it all boils down to the professor you are talking to and that's why it's important to study about them 
then I'm just talking about the slides, right? Then, of course, you can end up with why you think you're a good fit. Remember, these people receive tons of letter, um, emails requesting them to be in the, requesting for them to be the, um, their supervisor. So you don't know how many people were invited, just like you were invited for the interview. So you need to really, really express why you think you're a good fit for this position, for this PhD position. So talk about how your your the research you have done in the past and all that. Talk about the research you have done in the past. Talk about your academic experience and how you have been excellent for consistently excellent in your in your own kind of way, right? If you have won awards in the past, emphasize on them what those awards were for. You are maybe acknowledging your research and if you have publications, emphasize on those publications. If you have worked in a team before, emphasize on how you have successfully worked in a team, how you have led the team and the kind of outcome you had from projects that you did with the team. Just whatever it is that you know is your strength that can, that makes you feel like you're a better you are a better candidate for that position than the other person. Emphasize on those points and yeah. So these are the things that you want to have in your slide and then conclude, have a conclusion. Then on the other side of trying to understand what the professor does, you can also reach out to graduate students in the professor's group, which most likely you're going to have that list on the professor's website. So you can get a, uh, one or two persons to talk to, to know what the professor is like, what the professor looks out for in their students. So that will also help you to be able to come up with a good slide, like what to talk about while discussing with the professor. Then try to also have cons good basic concepts of your area. For example, if it's chemistry, try to have a good basic concept of chemistry because you can be asked random questions about some chemistry things that you may have forgotten you probably did in your undergraduate a long time ago. So these are kind of the tips that I have for you guys based on my experience. If there is anything you feel like I missed out, you can put it down in the comment section. If you have questions, you can put it down in the comment section and I will give answers to them, excuse me, to the best of my ability. And yeah, I think this makes sense. I hope this video is helpful to someone who is trying to go through this process or currently going through this process. So if, if till I come your way next time, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button, okay? I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Bye.